So, when did my life become pointless? Well, this was the beginning. I started high school, Carson High School, in the fall of 1979. Um, my mom did the very best that she could for us. Um, great job, you know, three bedroom home. Uh, she had a lot of duties and responsibilities. So, unfortunately, we began to grow distant because she couldn't spend as much time with me. And ever since I was a little boy, I was her Mickey Moco and she loved her little little Mickey Moco, right? So she was able to spend more time with me, but just wasn't able to from that point moving forward. And so we began to grow distant. You know, my grades really began to suffer. Uh, my, actually, my grades started suffering in junior high. And, but in high school, I just continued being a fool, really. Uh, disruptive in, in class, tardy. I'd skip my classes. I'd bother the girls, incomplete lessons, uh, failing in many subjects. I, I just didn't try. I was strictly going to school for the social aspects of it. Now, many would say, oh, it's because you don't have a father in the home and that's why you get into trouble and your grades are poor, lack of a father. Uh, that contributed to it, but I just think I was a sinful fool is what I was. I ended up getting into gangs. I was a member of the Carson Delamo 190 Block Crips and um, our local rival gangs were the Scottsdale and Centerview Pyrus. Yeah, um, they hated us, right? And they wanted to go to war with us. And so I used to hang out with um, a, a guy named Winford. They called him Wacky Winth. And we didn't carry guns or anything like that, but we, we, we used to tear up things. And uh, we did some things that would eventually land us in jail or dead. So uh, I'll just leave that there. Well, we were highly fascinated by uh, a gang in Long Beach called the Long Beach Insane Crip Gang. And it's like we were looking for mentors of some sort to show us how to be good gang members and uh, we'd skip school to look for them. We would actually leave school like at around noon, right after lunch, I think it was 12.30 or one o'clock. We'd just skip the rest of the day and we'd go to two parks, King Park and Silverado Park because that's where the Long Beach Insane Crip Gang uh, would hang out. One day, I'll never forget, we skipped school and we went to Silverado Park. And Wimph used to always talk about uh, a guy that he went to school with. He was actually in elementary with. Uh, that's a, a crazy, insane member of, of the Long Beach Insane Crip Gang called Mac. And he'd always talk about him. Man, he's nuts, man, he's crazy. And like, I wanted to meet him, right? So we'd go to, to those two parks, because supposedly that's where he and the gang members would hang out. And Wimph used to always say, he's truly insane, he's crazy. You know, he packs shotguns and guns and 357, the whole thing. And so one day, we go to Silverado Park and we're looking uh, for him and, and the gang members so we can observe them, right? And get some pointers from them. And, and so we walk across Silverado Park and I see a guy standing under a tree with his arms folded. And so Charles is approaching Charles Winford Brooks, thus Wacky Winf, they called him. He keeps walking and approaching this guy and I'm kind of flanking him, right? And he's walking, approaching a guy standing under a tree with his arms folded. And he keeps walking and he's walking and it's like he's getting excited as he continues to walk and he starts walking faster and I'm like, why is he approaching this guy? The guy looked bizarrely insane and he keeps walking and so I guess the guy under the tree 
wondered who are these two dudes walking up on me like this. And as Charles Wimp keeps walking towards him, again, he's speeding up his pace. He starts grinning. We get closer to the guy and Charles recognizes that that's him, that's Mac, that's my friend from years and years ago that I've been looking for since the sixth grade. But Mac does not recognize Charles or me and he pulls from up under his arm a chrome 357 Magnum. I saw my life flash in front of me when I saw that cold piece of steel and I'm like, Oh my Lord, right? I'm thinking I'm done. But before he had a chance to even aim the gun, their eyes locked and they recognized each other. And I'm like, I'm seeing my life flash right in front of me. And I'm like, Oh Lord, right? And they were like, what's up, man? What's up? Right? They like embrace each other and hug and all this kind of stuff. And, and, uh, and they're, you know, doing their little, man, I ain't seen you in years, man. What's up, man? What you doing in this part? And so, and I'm, I'm sitting up, <laughs> I'm breathing heavy. And I'm like, man, you just dodged a bullet or just, again, my light just flashed right in front of me. I go on back to school, you know, a few weeks go by. I start hearing rumors about, you know, some people that want to jump me, actually a Samoan gang, uh, the Booyah, tri Booyah tribe. I didn't even know Samoan gangs existed. Um, but yeah, some members of the Booyah, Booyah tribe, they wanted to jump me. Uh, like they hated me for being a gang member. And, and then some other Samoan gang from Carson, they wanted to get at me too. I'm like, I'm hearing these rumors. I used to be scared to go to school uh, some days because I'm hearing, man, they're gonna jump you after school, man. So that's why I felt justified in leaving school early sometimes. Then I, I, you know, I'm thinking, you know, maybe uh, this whole gang thing, you know, isn't, isn't cracked up to, to, you know, what they say it is or what I should be pursuing, I should be involved with, because I, I never really wanted to be this hardcore, person that that goes to jail or ends up dead I, i'm just looking for some excitement you know foolishly i had a few altercations with uh the scottsdale pyrus and the centerview pyrus i mean they're trying to get at me uh, one day before lunch they a couple of them approach me i'm just standing up at school by the lockers and one of them comes up, man, what's up with you, man? And all this kind of stuff, you know? And I, I'm just thinking, this is not for me. I, 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 you know, I got a mother and siblings that love me. This is not my life. I decided I'm gonna clean up my act. I didn't have to get jumped out of the gang, but I decided to, you know, clean up my act, stop wearing khaki suits and, and, and looking like a, you know, a hardcore gang member. And uh, again, the, 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 the reliving of that Chrome 357, just, I'm like, man, I'm done. I'm done with this kind of life. And uh, I wanna clean up and walk straight. So that's what I decided to do. And I changed my clothing from khaki suits to, um, you know, just regular clothing. And I wanna be a regular guy from that point on. What was the transition like then from being uh, on my way to being a hardcore gang member, it seems, some might say, to, um, to just being a normal guy? Well, all I can say is watch out, the king is coming.